are emo scene kids, but if you're over 25, you've probably never heard of them. Yeah. Hey, Vazna, it's Audrey. Come in, and I'm going to give you a tour of my Barbie dream house. Follow me. Hey, Vazna, it's Hannah Beth. This is my best friend, Hitler. I think you guys might know her. You guys have a lot of fans. Uh, how do you feel about that? Some of the fans are pretty sweet. Some of them, like, if you don't answer their message, they freak they out. They tell you that you're sl and you're ugly. Hey celebrities, it's Vitaly and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you can tell, I got inspired by my previous video about Jeffree Star's MySpace days. So I decided to make a full deep dive on a scene culture in general. Truly the best time. I look like a scene kid, I admit it. In August of 2003, a new website focused on social networking was created. The one and only MySpace. While other websites like Friendster and Life Journal were still alive, MySpace quickly became the social network to be on. From 05 to 09, it was the largest website website in the world, reaching more than 100 million users per month, even above Google, that's how crazy it was. A large number of these users were teenagers, who finally got their first taste of freedom on the web, because MySpace was a safe place to experiment with their own identity, and find like-minded peers around the world. And that was also the era when so-called scene queens were at the top of the game, or at the top of your top 8 friends at least. They controlled the blogosphere with the heavy hand of eyeliner, colorful spiky hairstyle and hot topic tees. Using only dial up modem. You definitely remember that one. Uh huh, honey. But just as quickly as the rose to fame, they seemingly disappeared from the mainstream. Today we're going to investigate how exactly a group of MySpace scene kids became online celebrities overnight when there was no such thing yet. So buckle up, legend, you're not ready for this one. Only on Vitaly's channel. Don't forget to like this video, celeb, don't be shady. Also, we're so close to 50k subs. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let's start from the very beginning. What exactly is a scene? This scene is a huge subculture that emerged from the existing emo subculture. Members of the scene were usually nicknamed scene kids, sinisters, or trendies. Although scene kids were associated with musical styles like metalcore, crunkcore, and neon pop punk, there was never a scene genre like there was for other subcultures like emo, punk, or goth. Because of this, origins of the scene are not as clean cut as other parts of alternative music history. Although the scene is not really a type of music, here is what Sinisters typically enjoyed. Broken Side, Breed Carolina, obviously. Speaking of, please tell me that you remember this song. <sighs> Can I just bring that time back? Please. I still remember when my online emo boyfriend sent this song to me saying, I dedicate this to you. Damn! Then we have 303 classics. Blood on the dance floor, The Millionaires, of course, as well as Scene Kids. <laughs> But there were also some bands that gained mainstream attention and large audiences, even though they were still heavily associated with the scene subculture, such as Bring Me the Horizon, Pierce the Veil, Paramore, and Metro Station. It's not all the scene music, obviously. Just a few examples. Don't attack me. Scene kids now pack clubs across Southern California with scores of young bands. Pretty, pretty in stereo! The early 2000s is the point when scene began to solidify itself as a legitimate substyle of emo, and that led to the emergence of the term scene queen, usually used to describe popular girls in the hardcore scene. Now, the perfect scene is all about looks, not actually being on the scene. You're most likely gonna spot a perfect scene girl at trendy bars or upscale music venues. Lifestyle, 
seen kids feel that their style is not only fashion statement but a whole ass lifestyle. They usually tend to have chappy layers and side bangs in their hair. Oh, and don't forget to tease your hair to make it poofy at the top. Many girls would wear at least one bow, headband or tiara on a daily basis. Makeup is another big part and is seen realness. Both boys and girls would wear a generous amount of black eyeliner. And don't forget the brightest eyeshadows and fake eyelashes. What are Audrey Kitching's makeup must-haves? Must and name haves. them. Lip gloss. What obviously. kind? Um, I like NARS. Mm -hmm. And I use Dior powder and cheap fake eyelashes, not the expensive MAC ones. Get like the $2.99 ones from CVS and use them for like a week straight. Ardell's. It's the best. They're so much better than the expensive ones. Foundation. Right now I'm using NARS, uh -huh. but I switch it up. Depends on the move. But um, I mix my foundation with an Avon moisturizer, which I love. Should I even mention tattoos and piercings? I don't think so. It's almost mandatory, let's be honest. You're not a sink kid if you're not wearing several inches of rubber or plastic bracelets on each arm, as well as necklaces with Hello Kitty, diamonds, broken hearts, skulls, lollipops, and many more. But what about boys, you might be wondering? Well, they would wear clothing that was considered feminine, such as skinny jeans, eyeliner, and graphic tees. Boys wear their band shirts tight and pants even tighter. They wear girl pants. Yes, girl pants are a must. Can you bend over comfortably in them? <laughs> Hair, straight or modified mohawks. Multicolored hair, the spike. And makeup from powder to eyeliner. A lot of eyeliner. All I gotta say is you can still be a manly man and wear makeup. For the record, I'm telling you the general tendency of the style. Everybody could wear what they wanted to, obviously. But if you're not a poser, Better get in those skinny jeans, baby. Now, a poser emo is a young person between the ages of 8 and 12 who just pretends that they're sad just to fit in with the other emos. You're most likely gonna spot a poser emo hanging outside a 7 Eleven or an arcade. Speaking of posers, many scene kids have strong beliefs about their style. The truest sinisters hate being stereotyped, while posers will be so excited about their new style that they will go around and tell people that they are seen now. And this tendency is hated in the community. They feel like many posers join the scene only for attention and they are not interested in music or the history of the subculture, which was originally the roots of the scene style. And on this note, I have a little story time for you. At the age 12, my absolute dream was to become a scene legend, but I've never had a proper opportunity to do so. Because in case you didn't know, originally I'm from this Russian village, also known as the middle of nowhere, with the population of 4,000 people. And we didn't even have the clothing stores, and I'm not even kidding, let alone something scene-ish. Plus, my mom was always like, you don't need the shit. But one day my sister sent me this pink tank top Cause she lived in a city, she's a city girl The tank top had this Converse logo on it I genuinely thought that now I was emo I mean, what can you expect from the village kid? But that's not even the story So I had this Nokia phone and there was this online chat in it And I've had a lot of emo and scene friends on it And I still remember the day when I went online and wrote to one of my friends My sister sent me this pink tank top, now I'm true emo And my friend was like You think that clothing makes you emo? No, you're a f***ing poser. I'm deleting you right now. To say that I was devastated would be an understatement of the century, you guys. I mean, I was a poser in the end of the day, but I just desperately wanted to be like those cool kids. Okay, back to the video. Yeah. Although these neon Barbies were often confused with their emo peers, they actually couldn't have been any more different. Yes, both subcultures were alternative and had some major influences on one another. But as a rule, the emo kids were a lot more brooding and wore way more black. But once again, it's a general tendency. Now, back to MySpace. As the website grew in popularity, it began cultivating early internet celebrities dubbed queens of the scene. Which leads us to the ultimate scene queens guide, made by your one and only Vitaly. This is everything you need to know about anyone who was anyone on MySpace. Hey Vazna, it's Audrey. Come in and I'm gonna give you a tour of my Barbie dream house. Follow me. If you didn't know who Audrey was during your MySpace days, I've got some bad news for you. You probably lived under the rock. She was essentially the queen of the queens. And every girl wanted to be like her. I'm the real Audrey Kitchen. I think you're just a genius. I'm the real Audrey Kitchen. I only date dudes and bands. And I like my metal like I like my coffee. Black. She began modeling when she was only 14 years old and even had a brief moment in which she dated Brandon Yuri from Panic at the Disco. 2000's gold, to be honest. At the time, she also had her YouTube reality series titled Trash in Love with her MySpace pal, Zoe So. I call it the scene version of the simple life. My hair is getting wet, dude. <laughs> I'm 
going to my mother and sign it. She said she's going to sell it on eBay when I get famous. So she can sell the house. Following the MySpace demise, she became a fashion blogger and founded her online brand Crystal Cactus, a website where she performed energy healings and readings. She also sold crystals and handmade jewelry. And let me tell you something, that business got her in a lot of trouble. The brand took off in 2015 and according to Audrey, she quote, makes every sample herself and shows her team everything. And they tweak it and collaborate on the final product. But in reality, it was nothing but a scam. The items that she handcrafted were simply bought on AliExpress. For example, this pair of $48 earrings listed on her website was found for just $3 on AliExpress, as well as every other item she was selling. I understand that this is how the business basically works. But why would you claim that everything is handmade? Such a disrespect to your audience. She was even proclaimed as Fraudry Kitchen. Plus, her former employees say that she emotionally abused them. Shout out to Jonathan Carson, the creator who investigated all of it. Check it out. When we would go to shoots, she would change clothes and like throw them at me. And then I would be, I like said something to her the one time where I was like, can you please not do that? It's extremely disrespectful. And it looks really unprofessional in front of other people. So, I would like if you did not do that anymore. And that's when she brought up that statement that she was a fairy queen in the past life and I was her slave. Those were her words. It was driving me to like a very dark place. I had no like personal life because she completely like invaded that, took it over. She got me to move down there to be closer to the business and she isolated me from my family and friends. Yeah. So that's like what she pretty much held over my head. So it went like that for a while and it was just a lot of like verbal and spiritual abuse. She made me very confused and like what to like, and I have to like get the away from her. Now I'm sorry if I ruined all of your teenage memories by this expose, but I had to bring it up. After the severe backlash she received, she disappeared from all the social media as well as closed her business. The next scene queen is Hannah Beth. Let's be honest, Hannah laid the blueprint for the influencer model we have today. When she first signed up for MySpace at the age 15, she initially began her journey as Audrey Kitchen's partner in crime. The rest is history. Hey everybody, it's Hannah Beth, and a lot of you have been asking me to do a makeup tutorial, so... I was either 15 or 16 years old and I remember people talking like Yeah, there is this new platform I was super into the whole emo vibe so that's when I got on it There was already Friendster but I wasn't into that I started to notice my count going up after 6 months or so I think I got up to maybe four or 500,000 back then So basically Audrey and I are very competitive against each other in certain things So I only hang out with Hannah because she's somewhat internet famous Yeah, and basically that's the only reason I hang out with her So we thought it might be kind of fun to go to Disneyland and see who can take the most photos of each other. Who gets more comments. Basically, I collect toys. I get most of them at Kid Robot. Um, these are all my dunnies. At the time, being an influencer was not a thing. I would find anyone that was a photographer and meet up with them, which probably was not safe, but I survived. People were always into my weird fashion and makeup. That's how I got a lot of my followers. That was a whole new world for me. At the time, I became really close with Audrey Kitchen and Jack Vanek. With those go to a bunch of shows and we always connected through that. Also Jeffree Star, he was in Orange County. I don't know if I ever thought that I would see Jeffrey and Hannah sitting sharing a plate of french fries again. This is like not uh, happened in a we long have time. On Valentine's Day we ran into each other at Springer's. Me and this yeah. girl Crystal had a Valentine's Day party and she's good friends with Jack. So at the party Jack called and was like, oh my god I can't believe you're with Hannah. And then I called on the phone and was like, I was like, listen, I don't want drama anymore. So me and Jack totally like reunited. And then I go to Swingers and then Jeffrey walks in. I was like, oh. <laughs> when I went up to him, I was like, it's like all the stars yeah, were aligned that day, right? Yeah. And then Crystal's like, I want to go say hi to Jeffrey. And I was like, I do too, whatever. So Yeah, and then right when I saw her, there, <laughs> there was no like weird feeling. It was just like, oh hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Like there was no weirdness at all. I just felt like there's always like a lot of other people like in our lives that were like jealous of how close we were. So they're always trying to like break us apart, like bring us down. I don't know. There was just drama and like you know how friends like take breaks and And like I feel like in the, the long time that we've known each other we've both grown up so much, you know. Like in the beginning I felt like you know we both were kind of immature and we let people affect us. Now we're just like that's never gonna happen again. 
I didn't hear the term Sin Queen until I was 17 or 18. Audrey and I did a warp tour together and I remember girls being like, oh my god, I look up to you guys, you like the Sin Queens. And I was like, what is that? We kind of were a staple of that whole scene. And then I was dating some guys that played in bands. <laughs> And this is what she looks like now, still stunning. And this leads us to another scene legend, Jack Vanek. Even if you are not into following the lives of strangers on the internet as an alternative teen, you may recognize Jack from her iconic graphic tees. In the beginning, she started selling her own bracelets at the Warp Tour, where she was previously a band photographer. Oh, and by the way, she and Audrey Kitching have something in common. No, not scamming fans. They were both dating musicians from Panic! at the Disco at the same time. Goals, not gonna lie. By the way, now she has a full-blown entertainment career as one of the hosts of the Lady Gang podcast. Good for you, legend. Zooey Suicide. Zooey was another one of Audrey's model sidekicks. Back in the day, they teamed up together under the name Trash Life and were making a lot of content together, with Hannah Beth included. So first off, what exactly is it that you do? Well, I'm just a scumbag. I don't really do anything. Yeah, like hang out, Shoots. models hanging out. How do you feel about the internet and today's youth? Oh no, it's f it up. I think it's gone way too far. Like when I when I was twelve, I was playing with dolls and you know playing kickball. Yeah, not, climbing trees. Nobody not goes outside anymore. Not sending people hate mail. They just sit by the computer all day and sh talk. Consumed with the internet, it's disgusting. We don't even own computers. No, no lie. Apparently, Zoe loved the idea of being someone's BFF so much that she even participated in Paris Hilton's My New BFF show. She's currently married, has children, and seemingly enjoys the ordinary lifestyle. Mr. Jeffree Star. I'm not gonna say a lot about him, cause I have a full video on Jeffree's early days, so definitely check it out after this one. But he was the original scene legend, point blank, period. Oh my god, Jeffree Star is so ugly without makeup on. Oh god, I mean, it's actually pretty true, but I feel like if I didn't have makeup on anyway, I think every girl would still want to sleep with me. Mm, or maybe not. Kat Von D. Although Kat is a celebrity in her own right, thanks to her successful TV show Lay Inc., she was still a source of style inspiration for many alternative teenagers. Her iconic tattoos, immaculate makeup and hair extensions made her an absolute icon in the eyes of many. Hi. Jeffrey! My name is Jeffrey Starr. In case you've never heard of me, I do music, I DJ, I model. I met Kat and we hit it off. Five years later, we're best friends. It's like cotton candy. <laughs> Today I'm getting a portrait of my best friend and my dog, Diva. Alright, here we go. Uh, I think now I have 80 tattoos. This is like one of the most painful ones. You have 80 now? Yeah. That's so cool. I've seen you go through so much in all this time and just... Alright, we've both been there so much. Yeah. You're one of the only people that came out and like supported me during my book tours. And I'll always be really thankful for that. Speaking of which, I got a third book deal. While talking about the sync wins, how could I ignore the millionaires? If the lyrics that get off top, give me some alcohol, mean something to you, you are a legend. We'll take off our underwear. The sisters Melissa Marie and Alice and Maria Green formed the band by accident after messing around on Garage Band. The rest is history. How did you get so popular on MySpace? Uh, oh, that's a good question. We had big MySpace accounts. Uh, you did. I did. I didn't. I didn't. So how'd you guys come up with the name Millionaires? Where'd that come from? It totally, yeah. It was just random, randomly like. Yeah, when we put up the song, we put up, made the song before we had the band name, and then yeah. I randomly just put Millionaires, and then it was like too late to ever change that. So yeah, then here we here we. So you guys just recorded stuff on your computer and like it became big or how did that happen? Yeah, we were just f***ing around garage band and made some loops, made some lyrics and... <laughs> That's awesome. All of a sudden. Side to side, left to right. Lick your lips, flip your hair, watch them sweat over there. Now, memory unlocked, please tell me that you remember Scotty Vanity and his legendary music, which is my guilty pleasure, by the way. Hey there, I like your hair. Who does your hair? He recorded his first single, I Like Your Hair, at the age 15, and it became an instant hit. It quickly put him on the radar.
By the time Mark Zuckerberg made Facebook available for public in 2006, MySpace had lost its status as the most relevant social network. And inevitably, this scene queen moment faded in the pop culture abyss. Today, as TikTok continues to grow, the scene aesthetic is slowly making a comeback in all its spiky glory, and I'm so here for it. Despite the new era of glossy Instagram perfection, this era is forever in my heart, point blank, period. Ok legends, I think this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed this type of content as much as I do, please don't forget to like this video and of course subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button down below or whatever color that is. I hope you remember that in the end of every video we meet in the comments section down below to discuss the topic and today is no exception. What do you legends think about this scene culture? Let's talk about it. Follow me on Instagram at Vitaly for the record and I will see you in my next video this week and remember, your ex is definitely toxic, the best way to make him big is to become successful. Bye, let's jump.